So this video will cover how to fix your kind of a dead mouse click from the Logitech mouse. Uh, this is the MX1000. So first off, make sure that you have uh, the mouse turned off and you'll want to uncover the screws that are underneath each one of the pads that you see on the bottom. I believe there's three or four pads, two in the back, um, two on the front. So again, this will address the kind of the dead click, if you will. So it was not the, the spring and the click, if that makes sense. It's kind of gone. So here I'm removing the uh, pad on the front, and underneath um, you'll see that there's small, small screws that you'll need to undo. What I did was uh, get, get out my jeweler screwdriver set. See here, cheap little set from Craftsman. And I have at it their Phillips. So use a couple different ones just to find the right size so I wouldn't strip them. Once you get all the screws out, I won't go over all of them clearly, but uh, then once you get the screws out, you can just kind of pop off the bottom here. So I'm trying to figure out where to get my fingernail in there. You can pop off the bottom. And just be careful, it's connected. There's a small little white cable you'll see right there. And you want to make sure that you don't uh, just rip that out of the connection. I'll show you how to pull it off here in a second. So in the base of the mouse, there's a little connector, basically, that you'll need to... Uh, there's kind of little arms that you need to kind of uh, reposition that will take the pressure off of the cable. And that you can hopefully see there. And that will allow the white cable to easily remove from the connector. Now you can set that part aside. And here I'm just kind of testing out the buttons. It, it would function, but just wouldn't click up. So you can do a quick double click. So what you do is uh, get a small little, again, flat uh, jeweler screwdriver, flat blade here. And there's a little clip that you have to pop off the shoulder in the front. And then the entire, uh, I don't know, plastic box or plastic top will come off of that thing. And here you can see that the copper color thing there is the, um, the spring. That was just a little button that I was removing off there. Um, if it looks like I'm doing this again, it's because I am. I actually uh, I believe I had to do it a couple different times. Um, I did not bend the spring enough. So what you'll see here is, is if you can hold it in some tweezers or something to that effect and uh, bend the spring down, it's almost like there's a, um, best way to describe it, it's like a boat shape as the main spring and then there's one little part that kind of hangs down and I should show it here in a second. You want to make sure you bend that down and that the part that bends down is what enables it to spring back up. And again, I'll show it here in a second. Ultimately, if you look on the left-hand side, you see that I popped off the other side just for comparison because I did actually put the spring in backwards one time. And as you can see here, it's not completely easy to put back in. So I basically, if you clip it in the front there, hold it with your finger, and then use something, either a finger or a screwdriver, to kind of pop it in. And there you go. So you can see it's in a fragile state in the sense that it could easily pop off. But once I saw that it was very similar to the other one, I thought that was very helpful. Um, hopefully this video will help you because you can see an actual good spring, if you will, on the left-hand side. So one of the tricky parts, you can see here I'm kind of just fine-tuning it just a little bit more, and hopefully it'll focus here in a second maybe not so the tricky part is is obviously to get the, the you don't want to bend it too much you don't want to break the spring um, I think you can kind of see the the level of which I bend it here um, you can see the the tension in the the spring itself up against that clip now is a little more firm than it was last time, so that'll give you a good indication that you've got the, uh, the spring bent at a proper level. But again, don't go too too much. There's my uh, crazy thumbs up. 
Now comes the tricky part. You have to basically put the little white uh, button back in upside down into the the black little box, if you will. And what I did is I used a little bit of double or scotch tape or whatever, just double doubled it on itself and put it on the top so that when you flipped it back over, it would hold the little white button in place because that was a frustrating part. And then once you get that back in, it's, it's just a reverse procedure. You put everything back together, uh, but you'll see me uh, snap that little part back in, push the button down against the tape. The tape is now holding it. Hold it down in the back and snap it down in the front. I did the same thing on the other side. If you notice the, the wheel there in the middle is a little loose, so just be cautious you don't knock it out, but it should be pretty straightforward. I did actually, there was a screw there, kind of tighten it back down. But uh, hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. It was pretty easy, but thanks for watching.